my goodness. Come and see this. Come and see this. Oh my goodness. That's a rainbow. Wait, what? Shh, shh, shh. Don't eel. scare. Don't scare. He's got a meal. On today's adventure, we're going to be exploring another stretch of river system and looking for some of the more rare turtle species that can be found only in the southeastern parts of North America. Many turtle species will only live in one or a very few specific river systems, and there's at least three species of turtle that can only be found in this exact area. Alright guys, there's a turtle right there. I just saw him buried down as a soft shell turtle. So watch, if I grab... Yep, look, there he is. Now I'm here, little dude. Hello. Check that out. Saw him bury right in front of us. This is a spiny soft shell. Just a medium size one. Oh, look at his little mouth. Ah! <laughs> He's trying to get me. Oh, goodness. They got a mouth like a little tiny snapping turtle, so I wouldn't want to get bit by them. Now, the reason that they're called a spiny soft shell is because they're actually really rough. This kind of looks like a smooth, smooth, soft turtle, but it's got all these little spikes all over him, and I actually feel it on my hand. Now, this would be a male. And the reason I can tell that is he's got a huge tail. The males normally have longer tails than the female. And uh, this would be a medium size one. They get huge. These turtles get absolutely monstrous. Now, spiny soft shells, you can see they've got all this little yellow patterning. And they've got a little pig nose. So what they do is they go up to the bank and they bury down during the day. And they sit and wait fully covered. And when anything like a little shrimp or a crawfish goes by, they come out, whack, grab it, and just pull it back in. They normally eat little crustaceans, they might even eat clams up and down this river, but they normally don't like to eat as much fish as many other turtles. They got little flippers, almost like a little freshwater sea turtle. Very cool little guy, and they're flat, and they're actually really fast. You'll get to see in a second, but these guys take off really, really fast, so they're not like a normal turtle. They don't have a hard shell, it's kind of more of a leathery, tough leathery shell. And uh, they are very quick. There's no way I'd be able to catch them if he had taken off from that little spot. But normally, how I catch them is they'll bury down and they'll just sit there because they think they're perfectly hidden, which uh, most of the time they're not. All right, see you, little buddy. Watch this. They're really fast. Woo! <laughs> you know, it's funny. He buried down. He didn't go anywhere. A little water snake just jumped from here. There he is, there he is. Got him, got him. Got him. <laughs> little fella, check that out. It's a little Midland water snake. This is one of the most common water snakes on this river, other than the diamondback water snake. Have a look at that little dude. He hopped right off those little branches. I've seen a couple little snakes go plop in the water as we're passing them in the kayak, but uh, this is the first one I've gotten a hand on. Oh, yeah, it's all right, little buddy. Give me a little nip on top of my hand. They got little tiny teeth as baby water snakes. Now water snakes, as you, most of you guys know, are going to be one of the most common snakes out here. And uh, this little river system would have midland water snakes, banded water snakes, diamondback water snakes, all those different little guys. And uh, very common species. They get much bigger than this one, so it would be a young one. Probably about a mm, year and a half to two years of age. Got a little bit of red on his face right there. Very cool little snake though. Good catch. He jumped right off and took off right across there. I've missed quite a few water snakes, so uh, good to finally get one. They're always fun to catch. All right, see you little dude. So far, we haven't exactly found anything that's super rare. Just some of the more common reptiles that live in this area. And there haven't been any signs of the turtles that we're looking for. While continuing to search for turtles, we found something much rarer. A snake that is almost never seen by people. And it's still largely a mystery due to its elusive habits and rarity. Oh my goodness! Come and see this! Come and see this! Oh my goodness! That's a rainbow! Wait, what? Shh, shh, shh. Don't eel. scare, don't scare. She's got an eel! What? She's got an eel! No way! Look at it! Oh, she's eating an eel! She's eating an eel! Can I get in the shot for a second? Yeah, get in the shot. What look, do you think? Look at this! Look! Look, 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 look! This is... I want to focus on what she's doing. Okay, okay. Just focus on her. I'll, I'll film this too. Yes. Well guys, this is a rainbow snake. This is probably the rarest snake we absolutely could have found. Now another name for this snake is the eel moccasin. And I think you can see why. She's eating, oh my goodness, look, look how fast she's eating that. 
She is eating a small, more like a kind of a juvenile American eel right now. That is the only thing that a rainbow snake eats. They don't eat anything else but eels. Well guys, this is a very, very special snake. This is a rainbow snake. This is one of two of the only Ferencia snake species in the world. Now Ferencia, that's just one of the scientific names for basically the two species that eat amphiumas and eels. Now the other species would be the mud snake. The mud snakes are more of an uncommon snake rather than a rare one. Now I'm trying to be really gentle because she did just eat and in a little bit I'll be able to kind of pick her up a little bit more. Very relaxed. This is a completely non-aggressive, non-venomous species. Okay, how are you doing, sweetie? Now, she just completely ate that eel, and I've got to be gentle with her, because snakes are known to puke up anything that they eat if they're handled too roughly. So if she does puke that eel, it's because I'm handling her rough, but uh, I've really, that shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. I don't think she's going to puke that eel up, because uh, she's very relaxed, very calm. Hello, sweetie. This is not only a really really rare snake, but this is a huge rainbow snake, absolutely massive. Now this would have to be a female, because the males do not get this big, and I would say that this is one of the rarest snakes, possibly in the United States. Not considering any snake species we haven't found, this might be one of the rarest snakes in the United States. They say that the rarest is the Louisiana pine snake, but I think finding a Louisiana pine snake is much easier than finding a rainbow snake. Now the rainbow snake is called a rainbow snake because of all these gorgeous colors. Look at that. Bright yellow belly and red and black stripes on the top. And the mud snake, uh, he's only got a solid black top with a red checkered belly. So this snake is much prettier. Now the only thing that this snake eats is the American eel or the green eel. It's the only thing they eat. Out of all the things down here, frogs, mice, lizards, they only eat eels. Now look at its little face right there. Really cute, really cute little face. They've got a face that looks very similar to an amphiuma, which is very interesting. Mud snakes and rainbow snakes have a face that looks very similar, kind of like a salamander looking face. This is a very, very cute snake. It's got a little flat nose, and as you can see, they're just kind of built to take down eels. And they've got another thing, is their tail. Now they'll use this for larger eels, but there's a little spine on the tip of their tail, and what they use that for is pinning down the eel. So they'll grab the eel and pin it down to where they can get to the head of the eel, and then they basically have their meal instantly. Once they grab the head, it's pretty much over. Now what rainbow snakes do to catch eels is they wait along the bank for an eel to pass by, and this is what's been seen. If you look it up, there's like a very few videos of rainbow snakes eating eels online, but if you see, they'll be waiting by the bank, and they'll grab it, and they'll squirm their whole body backwards, basically to pull that eel on the land. They don't want to fight it in the water, they want to fight it on land. And they hold it down until the eel is completely worn out, and then they squirm their way to the head of the eel and eat it like one giant noodle. That's how these rainbow snakes get their food. My goodness, this is an absolutely legendary snake. Look at this. Look at his little face. It's got all these little black dots along it too. This is like the... This is probably the most special snake we've found on the channel to date. This is like the rarest snake and it's big, it's pretty, and I really, what would be awesome is if we could get in the future a breeding program going for rainbow snakes, because there's nothing like that anywhere in the world right now, because it's really not that well known of a snake. You know, not a lot of people know about rainbow snakes, and uh, you know, getting some back out into the wild, you know, being able to breed them and release babies would be absolutely incredible so we're, we can see more of these guys in the future out in the wild. Now these things are so rare here in Louisiana, it's practically legendary. This snake is, I've been trying to track down how to find one of these and I've only got one, possibly two sightings of rainbow snakes in Louisiana. You could search literally your entire life for this snake and never find one. That's how difficult they are to find. Now rainbow snakes are rarely found, and that means that there's not a lot of actually really intense research done on these snakes. There's a couple of little research reports that I've read on them, but nothing goes super in depth on this snake because they're so, so rare. A few people find them every year, and uh, it's a really incredible thing, but they're just such a spread out species. In fact, there used to be another species of rainbow snake down in Florida, the southern rainbow snake, and they're now believed to be extinct. The last time they were seen is in the 1950s or 60s. 
And uh, really that kind of shows how rare these snakes are, is that they don't even know if there are any of the southern rainbow snakes left. Now the number one hot spots for rainbow snakes tend to be along the east or Atlantic coast, normally in places like Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and even some places in Georgia, those tend to be the hot spots for them. Mississippi, Louisiana, Alabama, and Florida, they've all been found in, but it's an extremely, extremely rare snake to find in these areas. Now, one thing that's in common with most of the rainbow snakes that are found is they're found this time of year, kind of the late, late summerish time, basically. And what that means is rainbow snakes come out most and they're seen most when they're out to lay their eggs. And it's mostly large females. This is a huge, fat female, and I'd have to guess that she's pregnant. In fact, I'm sure she was looking for a spot to lay her eggs when she caught that eel. Most of the time, these guys are nocturnal, but so little is known about these guys, they really can't even confirm that. Now, I would have to guess that these guys live in burrows along the rivers, like little dens right up against the riverbank. But seriously, so little is known about this snake. There's not many of them kept in captivity. They're not really anything that zoos keep because they're so difficult to keep because they only eat eels. Very special snake. Now this is a snake I've been wanting to see for a very long time and it's one I've been wanting to study for a long time. And I've never gotten a chance to actually see one of these snakes. And after seeing it eat that green eel, which was absolutely incredible, I think that these guys would eat green eels in captivity, which would be really, really incredible for researching these snakes because not a lot of people keep them and uh, they're a very difficult snake to breed in captivity, which if we're gonna see more of these guys in the future, we've gotta be able to keep them in captivity, breed them, and re-release them back out into the wild eventually. So I think what we're gonna do is, we're gonna hold on to this snake, because rainbow snakes are so rare, and really, it's just such a unique snake to study. I think it's gonna be great if we bring this guy back with us and do some genuine research on this snake. Not only its behavior, but its diet, how well it does in captivity, and basically, if it lays eggs, that's gonna be a huge, huge bonus because I don't even think anybody's ever hatched rainbow snake eggs in captivity. So if she is pregnant, which I'm pretty sure she is looking at how fat she is, if she is pregnant, then that means she's gonna lay eggs and that would be incredible if we could hatch those eggs because we could not only document hatching the eggs, which that would be a first time probably in history. I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to check up on that. We are definitely holding on to this snake. And you know what, worst case scenario, if she's not doing well, meaning she doesn't want to eat anything from us, or she doesn't like how she's set up, and really just is not a snake that adapts to captivity, we know exactly where we found her and we can bring her straight back here and even try and offer an eel before she goes to give her a better chance of doing well along here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you did enjoy, definitely leave a like. And I will see you guys next time. That's an awesome snake. So for anybody who is wondering whether she was a female and whether she was pregnant at all, today is September 10th and we might be the first ones ever to successfully hatch baby rainbow snakes. One of them is fully out of the egg already. Oh look at the little baby.